Psst. Well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lasses, and welcome to the click. May I just say that you have unlimited wrists today, and you smell amazing. No cap. Today, we're going to look at amazing stories about a petty revenge. Has anyone ever wronged you in a very petty way? Or maybe there's a bully you would like to get back at without getting into really dangerous territory. Well, this video is for you. Welcome to Petty Revenge. Mwah. Ooh, it's gonna be juicy. I am so here for the drama XD. Entitled Parker parked in my driveway, so I blocked them in and got drunk all weekend. A Friday night, I came home from work to find someone on our block was having a large party, and someone decided they were entitled to park in my driveway. Keep in mind, my driveway is a single car width lined with a retaining wall on both sides and a garage at the end. Essentially impossible for a tow truck to come pull them out without property damage. Seeing this and the lack of street parking, I took this as a queue to park right behind them in my driveway. Now a few hours go by and the entitled parker is now knocking at my door demanding I move my car so she can leave. Seeing as they were demanding, I informed them that I had been drinking and could not move my car. The entitled parker then decides to call the police to get them to force me to move when you have already parked on their property. Oh, I want to see where this is going. When the police knocked at my door, I was sure to grab a beer from the fridge before I answered to talk to the officer. Well, hello there, officer. Are you sure you want me to get into the car? Alright, yo. I had informed him after that. I got home, I was unwinding and had been drinking and was in no shape to drive. At this point, their hands were tied because they couldn't tow her car out and I'm in no shape to drive and I am legally parked in my driveway. I ended up telling the entitled parker that since it's a long weekend, I would be on a weekend long bender and they could come move my car after I got to work on Tuesday. The absolute entitled audacity to park in someone else's driver without permission. I would have taken an Uber to work on Tuesday just an extra frick you. Oh, that is absolutely amazing. So when work comes around and you told them, hey, I'm gonna move my car on Tuesday, you've actually left your car there. So they have to make all their way back to your house and they still can't move their car. <laughs> frick with my driveway again, will you? <laughs> Do not tempt me. Dyed my hair blue so boss would stop blaming me for hair in customers' food. That is really smart. This is so smart. I used to work for a sandwich shop. All the other employees there were Indian women with very long black hair. Mine was sort of similar, I suppose, medium length and brown. But every time a customer would complain about a long black hair in the food, my boss would immediately blame me without any hesitation or investigation, despite the fact that I was the only person who wore their hair up and netted. So one day I dyed my hair blue for the sole purpose of not being blamed for black hair being in the food. You guessed it, it happened. And how huffy and annoyed my boss got when I said it couldn't be my hair because mine is blue was beyond amusing. <laughs> I do love that they were trying to go to you still. I mean, if I read between the lines, that feels like what it is. And they're like, oh, there was more hair in the food. And I say, it's literally not mine. Wrong color there, good sir. A bit color blend, maybe. As I am. Oh, yes, indeed. This hair is gray. <laughs> sir, that's blue. Ah. I need to do another stream where I take colorblind tests. I need to try those like colorblind glasses and I can make one of those super dramatic videos where I look at a sunset and be like, oh, is this really what colors look like? And I cry a little bit and everyone in the comments will be like, wow, click. You're so beautiful. <laughs> Hell yeah, I should do this. A stranger tells me, smile, it could be worse. Instantly regrets it. Last week, I was out and about, making a start on some errands I had. As I was walking, I was going through my long to-do list in my head. So I wasn't frowning, I wasn't smiling, my face was just neutral. A man starts heading towards me. As we pass, he tells me, smile, it could be worse. I stop, stare at him for a moment, and then I say, my parents were in an accident. My mom died on impact. We're turning off my dad's life support tomorrow. The guy looked like a robot being suddenly shut down. His face fell. He looked like a deer in headlights. He stuttered and stammered. He was obviously trying to think of something to say. And when he couldn't, he turned around and speed walked away. My parents are both fine, there was no accident, but it annoys me when people think they have the right to dictate how people are feeling and what expressions they make, especially when they don't know what is going on in their lives. It's unhelpful and patronizing. Imagine telling somebody who could just be given a terminal diagnosis, SMILE, IT COULD BE WORSE, <laughs> or somebody who's just lost a child, been laid off, or is otherwise struggling and in a terrible situation. Yeah, and I'm also not gonna just walk down the street smiling for no reason. Can you imagine how creepy and unsettling that is? Imagine meeting Someone just going home from the grocery store and just like, I'm gonna go buy milk. <laughs> Hello, fellow pedestrian. <laughs> I think that would be uh, more concerning, like fam. 
I think part about happiness and smiling and that kind of stuff is because of the contrast in life. Not every moment in your life is going to be like blissful that will justify a smile. I mean, sure, a positive outlook on life helps sometimes, don't get me wrong, but like expecting everyone to smile all the time when just doing mundane everyday tasks is a bit like... Damn, no, my laundry is not that exciting. I'm not gonna giggle with excitement when folding my underwear. <laughs> you should smile more. <laughs> How about I feed you the sock? One to block my driveway, officer. It's gonna be another minute or two on coffee. About a decade ago, I worked an early morning shift at a fast food restaurant. We opened at 6 a.m., so I had to be at work at 5 a.m. I would leave my house at about 4.45 a.m. every morning. My management was pretty relaxed about the opening shift. Clocking in up to 10 minutes late wasn't really an ordeal, as long as you showed up ready to go. I came outside 4.45 and find that the local police officer had pulled over someone and is now blocking my driveway. This has happened before, but normally in the afternoon, and normally I just ask the officer to move forward or back couple of feet and then I pull in or out of the driveway. No sweat. This officer, however, angrily informs me that I will have to wait until he's done. I snap a picture of his car, text it to my manager and explain my tardiness. 40 minutes later, the police officer finally moves. A bit of a slow writer, aren't we? 40 minutes to write a note? God damn. I scramble into the car and head to work. I get there 15 minutes before we open. I frantically start to brew tea, fetch ice, having to condense my 50 minute routine into 15. I almost forgot to brew coffee. Opening time rolls around, and the first group of customers come in. It's a group of our local police officers, led by the captain. I guess they're about to do a shift change. One of the officers in the group is the one who blocked my driveway. Anyway, the captain orders coffee, and I regretfully inform him that there's a five-minute wait on coffee because I got to work extremely late. Captain asks why, so I pulled out my phone and explained that this one of his officers blocked my driveway for 45 minutes for a routine traffic stop. Captain proceeds to chew out that officer in front of all of his colleagues and exclaims that nothing short of life or death emergency would block my driveway if it will interfere with him getting his morning coffee. It was never blocked again, and the captain always got his coffee at 6 a.m. without interruption, and everyone lived happily ever after. <laughs> This is so beautiful. This is the kind of stuff that almost feels scripted because it's so perfect. And I mean, sure, some stories like this could very much be fake, but considering how big the world is and how many people are out there, most of these things would probably happen sooner or later to someone, you know, it's just statistics. If the number closes in on infinity, everything will happen sooner or later, even the juiciest, unlikeliest of stories. Mm. Yum. Ruin my wedding to propose? <laughs> I will ruin your proposal. I, 35 male, have a younger brother, Todd, 29M, who had a complicated birth and had to stay a month in the ICU, and because of that, my parents have always doted on him and almost denied him nothing, even if it was to the detriment of my sister, Abby, 32F, and I. My brother drinks in on the attention and has on more than one occasion made himself the center of attention at either my, my sister's, or cousin's special event. Because of this, Abby and I have a strained relationship relationship with Todd and our parents. Unfortunately, Todd met and fell in love with Lucy, 24F, who announced her own pregnancy at the baby shower my mom held for Abby. Out of all the days? Couldn't have picked a different... No? No, you had to... Had, all right, all right. You know, there can be two special days, you know? You don't have to force your special day into someone else's. It is okay, you can make your own one. Maybe it's even better for you too. When I proposed to my wife, Michelle, 30F, I just wanted to elope, but she really wanted her family to be there, so I invited my family out of obligation. While out, my best man, Jim, 30M, noticed a receipt from a jewelry store slipped out of Todd's pocket. Jim confronted Todd about this, which led to an argument. Jim told me everything, and I told Todd that he was no longer going to be a groomsman because I knew he was going to propose at my my wedding. Todd cried to her parents, which led to a blowout. Oh, that is so typical, like the young sibling goes and cries because of entitlement. Don't propose on other people's weddings unless you have the clear from the people who are having the wedding. Jesus Christ. In my parents' eyes, since Todd never admitted that he was going to propose to Lucy at my wedding, I was unfairly judging him. I refused and brought up Todd's past behavior. My parents couldn't refute this and got Todd to agree to not try anything at my wedding. This wasn't enough to convince me to let him be a groomsman, but I warned him that if, as a guest, he would try anything, I would make him regret it. Fast forward to the wedding and surprise, surprise, Todd walked over to Lucy and proposed to her during Michelle's father-daughter dance and did it in a way so everyone would notice. 
It's not even in like a sneaky, classy way. One thing if you do it at the end of the wedding, as a couple of comments here pointed out, that like, oh, if you do it at the end, there's only family left, you do a little cute little thing, sure, that's fine. But during the dance, you might as well do it when the priest is like saying the, do you take him to lawfully wed him? Oh, no, no, will you marry me? It's like, worst moment, worst moment, or at least second worst moment. Cue my revenge. Jim and I had hired a woman to pretend to be Todd's side piece, who cornered Todd and Lucy and claimed that she was pregnant with his baby. Todd denied this, but when she called his phone, oh my god, I gave her his number and messed with Todd's phone to incriminate him. It didn't look good. So you even rigged the phone numbers and contacts? Oh, this is devious. Lucy threw the ring back at Todd and left in tears. I kind of feel bad for Lucy, though. Like, she's just kind of caught in the crossfire by this, like, super immature 29-year-old and what all the stuff he does to his family. That is, uh, that's, that's, aw, poor Lucy, man. When Todd saw the smile on my face, he knew that it was me, and I didn't respond to a single call or text from him or my parents until after the honeymoon. Lucy has thrown Todd's stuff out and has been denying access to the kid. Oh my god, Todd is furious and is demanding that I clear his name. I sent him a text saying that I had no idea what he was talking about, as well as a screenshot of a bill of the wedding and gave a vague message demanding reimbursements for half of the wedding costs. Michelle knew the whole time that what I was planning and gave me the green light after Todd ruined her moment with her dad. So I felt pretty good, but now even Abby thinks I went too far. Ooh, no! During the father-daughter dance? That's insane. I love what you did. Maybe time to go no contact instead of low contact. You have your new family now. I can't believe the audacity. It would be one thing if he wanted to wait until the party was dying down and it was just family and a few friends left to do it with his brother's blessing. But against his wishes, during one of the most intimate moments of the reception, he is a douche. I also like how they actually talk to him beforehand and be like, don't do this. And he was like, uh, fine. And then they do set up a contingency plan and he still does it. And of course it backfires. Oh my God. I mean, the revenge is really juicy. It's like basically relationship ruining revenge. That's pretty deep. But at the same time, he's also a douche. I don't know. It's like, it's a satisfying story, but my God, I would not want to be there. My dad, trans, has discovered how to beat transphobes in the South. We're currently in the South visiting family. When we were at a restaurant, my dad, FTM, had to go to the bathroom. I am still not entirely sure how, but a guy in there determined that he was trans and went shouting to the barman to kick my dad out. My dad, instead of trying to win that argument in a bar full of Southerners, decided to go the complete other direction. He channeled his inner Southern righteous fury and went off on that man for accusing him of being a transgender, demanding he be kicked out and called a guy an agent of Satan. A long story short, it worked. Got the other guy and his family kicked out and got a free beer in for his troubles. Edit, I should mention that my dad has been trans for 45 years and this is the most passing person you have ever met. That's why I say I'm not sure how, unless the guy straight up looked over the stall door. There is no way to tell. That is absolutely wild. I do, I do love the sweet revenge, though. I do love the sweet revenge. It's like transphobic person trying to get people kicked out for no good reason. It's being hippity hoppity now. It's your evening that's ruined in this property. I mean, it's still sad that this is the norm that, you know, people get kicked out for that reason. And he got kicked out for, like, accusing someone of being trans. It's like, it does show how sad it is and how many bad values there are out there regarding these topics. But at the same time, if we just zoom in on this one instance, it's still quite satisfying. <laughs> How does that boot in your butt feel now? My ex cheated, so I refunded a gift and now she is livid. My ex broke up with me just about a year into us dating. In hindsight, she was awful, but I was blind to it all. She broke up with me over the phone, which seemed a little informal. <laughs> informal! Yeah, that's one way of putting it. From all the time we spent together. Fast forward a week after that, several individuals connected to her but not to each other confirmed she was in fact seeing another man. I didn't confront her about it because I realized that things just don't work out sometimes. And at that point, I suppose you already parted ways. Even if she was cheating, it's like, all right, good riddance. It's another reason to not look back at that absolute train wreck. It was just the way she went about it that irked me. I am old enough, late 30s, to accept that people are just buttholes. But I also felt like she was getting away with something without feeling even a bit of remorse. The breakup was only contact. No calls or texts occurred after that over a year ago. I remember for Christmas that I bought her, well us, a really expensive couple's massage spa package. Because she would always say how she wanted to do something like that. I had purchased some big package from a local place that costed roughly $600. I obviously didn't have the certificate 
associate with me, I decided to go to the spa and make up a story how I lost the certificate. I show them the receipt, always keep those, and show them my credit card charge. They wound up reissuing me a gift card and cancelling the other. That was over a year ago and frankly I forgot about it. Today I get a call from her, first contact in a year since breaking up, and she is screaming at me over the phone that the gift certificate is no good and the spa place accused her of stealing and what a POS I was for reporting it as such. I called the guy, he said he told her it was reported stolen. <laughs> I just politely explained I didn't think she was deserving of it, and if she really wanted to, she could just have Mark, dude she was banging- Oh, don't soil my good name, God! Pay for a new one. I then hung up. Gonna make an appointment to use that card with my new GF soon. Mission accomplished. Oh, that is a little bit of sweet karma. That's a bit of sweet karma. But how entitled can you be to call your ex after a year, after a bad breakup, when you both cheated and broke up over the phone? <laughs> And be like, that gift card you got me over a year ago is not valid. <laughs> the freaking audacity of some people, man. I swear to God. Here is a comment with a similar story. Left the abusive ex, realized I still had the big membership store card in my name. I've been paying for it for a while and they never said a word, just kept using it without a peep. I knew they were using it because when I asked customer service at the membership store, they could see all the transactions they had made. So I cancelled it and had them dropped, with a new card issued for me only. 30 minutes later, my phone starts blowing up. Turns out the ex was at the membership store while I was cancelling the card. I just laughed and laughed, told them to get their own. Still gives me anxiety when I think about it. Black eyes and broken nose will never be forgotten. Oh, the associations with like bad previous relationships is... I don't know, it's like a instinctual gut feeling that is so hard to shake. I wish you the best in your recovery, but that is some sweet piece of karma right there. And also speaks about the gross entitlement. Like, really? You were actually using someone else's money without telling them? And then you get mad when you can no longer do it? <laughs> You should have just shut up and be grateful you were even able to use it for as long as you did. <laughs> Come on. My boyfriend looked up spoilers to our favorite video game, so I did too. My boyfriend and I play Zelda Breath of the Vile together. I am a take your time and enjoy the ride kind of gal, while he is a let's look up how to beat this game right now kind of guy. Because his way ruins all the fun, we came up with a rule. No looking up spoilers. We were looking for a particular challenge, the 8 heroin side quest for my fellow Zelda nerds, for a very long time. Suddenly, my boyfriend says, I, uh, I did something bad. I looked up where to go. I'm so sorry, I just couldn't take it anymore. I told him it was fine, but he could not tell me what he had seen. He agreed. I then excused myself to the bathroom and looked up the location as well. I then spent the next hour and a half wandering so close to the location without ever making it there. I could see him squirming around in his seat every time I got close. When I jumped off the cliff the statue was built into, gliding down to the base of the statue and continuing on without turning around to look at it, I thought he was going to explode. He was clenching his hair in both fists and biting his lower lip trying to contain himself. That's when I caved and told him what I had done. He thought it was hilarious and <laughs> told me about how he wanted more than anything to yell, TURN AROUND! WHAT ARE YOU DOING?! We had a good laugh about it. He hasn't looked up a spoiler since. This is the kind of wholesome petty revenge we all needed to see today. That is so good. This is some real proper couple goals. I love this. You keep spoiling things for me? Well, I'm gonna troll you when I already know it, but I will purposefully make it difficult. <laughs> oh yes indeed, my love. I love this. This post is so more wholesome than all the other stuff here. <laughs> I took away all the towel seat reservation at the resort. I was on holidays in an all-inclusive resort. First day, we couldn't find any lounge chairs by the beach by the sea. Fair enough, we arrived in the afternoon. Next day, we go to find a spot, but most of the spots were taken by towels. We find an empty seat and to our surprise, most of the chairs stay reserved almost a whole day or never gets used. Third day, we decide to take some towels off two loungers and enjoy our day. Four? Hours in, an older couple shows up that they had towels there and kick us off with help from an attendant. That pissed me off. So every following day I went to take the towels off every unattended lounger after breakfast and then went to watch the chaos from my balcony. Many, many people complained and by the end of the week there was a sign that unattended towels would be removed. Success! 
I hate stuff like that. We had a rule back in uni, whenever we had sleepover things, in like a party cabin we had and that kind of stuff, that man paxar me kroppen, meaning that you claim your place with your body. You can't just put the bag there and then party until 6 a.m. while no one else gets to sleep in that bed. It's like, if you if you want the bed, the best way to secure it is to go to bed. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good rule in general. My mother is a butthole and I have been collecting dirt on her for years. So my dear old mother, has been my personal hell for as long as I can remember. Starting from threatening to hit me with a bottle, to trying to break down my door while screaming obscenities at me, to actually hitting me over the head with an umbrella and yelling at me when I cried. I was 11, by the way. She blamed me for my sister's divorce. I was six at the time it happened for years. How is, th how is that possibly connected? I mean, the whole thing about blaming a kid for a divorce in the first place, but this is like, this is so out there. You little six-year-old who's barely seen anything of the world, you're probably responsible for this divorce. <laughs> That's not even this family divorce. Seems legit. Left for three months without a warning, then acted entitled to my forgiveness when she came back. Throwing things at me, broke three TVs, and called me a myriad of names ranging from mild things to useless waste of space to an actual curse slash punishment. The worst thing is that she acts like she's the best mom in existence around other people, complimenting me and stuff, and I can't have a support system because no one would believe me when I say she is awful. Ooh, she's like one of those r slash insane parents people, when they're awful behind the scenes, but then on Facebook they post these little cute, colorful squares where it's like, I am the best parent ever, and I believe your kids always come first and but then behind the scenes they're like the most abusive pile of garbage you've ever seen yeah, yeah, I think, I think social media brings a lot of that out. <laughs> Isn't it great? But I had an ace up my sleeve I kept for two years now. I secretly took videos and audios of every horrible moment and kept them in a safe folder. I had moments like the ones mentioned above and lots more of her talking poo about neighbors, friends, her own eldest child behind their back. Tonight, I'm packing for uni. By morning, the whole folder will reach multiple people, including my half-siblings, aunts, uncles, neighbors, her besties, etc. Bad Good luck and worst day, mother. You always said justice is better served cold. <laughs> Honestly, that just sounds like sweet karma, though. And it sounds like they're being nasty to everyone. It's just with you, they can get away with it so direct because you were a kid and they actually had control of your life. That's why I always think it's important to talk about these kind of things because especially in parental situations, people who are abusive, it gets so freaking bad. It's so bad. So go for it. That sounds like sweet, sweet karma. Before you do that, I will also recommend to make sure you have your own birth certificate, SS card, if in the US, and any other documents or sentimental items with you out of the house. Lock down your credit too. Yeah, that's good. Good. Defend it. Because people like this, they tend to go swinging whenever you do anything to kind of get back at them or even defend yourself. You know, they see anything as antagonistic. That's how abusers work, sadly. So defend yourself, then hit the red button and go live your life somewhere else with people who appreciate you. Best of luck. Guess what happens when you write up your best employee after he came in to help on his day off? Not my story, but recently happened to a friend of mine. Personal details omitted, obviously. My buddy Steve has worked at a small business for over 10 years. Most of his time there has been pretty alright, but recently has become a remarkably worse place to work. Steve is the most senior employee outside of management and by far the most productive. He's always training new hires, working extra hours, helping other departments, you name it. And pretty often, Steve will come in for a couple of hours on his day off to take care of backed up paperwork and general housekeeping of his department. This does wonders for keeping the department running smoothly, especially when they are busy. Management knows about this and approves. Going into the holidays this year, they are absolutely slammed as usual. Orders are backing up and it's all hands on deck, extra hours, full tilt. After another 60 hour work week, Steve has a couple of days off. On his second day off, he decides to go into work for a few hours. He knows his co-workers are likely too busy to be taking care of the side stuff, so he's being a team player and helping out. While he's finishing up and about to leave, Steve's manager comes up to him and they have the following conversation. Hey Steve, quit messing around, get back in there and do your job. Steve replies, um, hey manager, sorry, it's my day off. I'm not scheduled to work this shift, I'm just helping out, leaving in like five minutes. Manager replies, the heck you are, get your butt out there. Steve says, nope, not happening, I am going home. The next day, Steve is, predictably, brought into the office, dressed down and written up for insubordination. But there's a few things about Steve that you should know, that his employers knew but either forgot or didn't care about. One, Steve has been getting fed up with his employer for a while. Two, Steve is quite financially stable, as he works in a high-demand industry and his wife also has a fantastic well-paying job. Three, Steve is about to become a dad. In fact, he's very, very close to becoming a dad, right after the holidays most likely. So, Steve is in the manager's 
office, just finished getting talked down to and handed his write-up to sign. Steve signs his write-up and hands it back, along with an envelope with a short letter inside. What's this? Manager asks. My two weeks notice. Cue the backpedaling. Manager is apologetic, asks for Steve to at least finish the holiday rush. Big Boss comes in and offers a race if he stays the whole shebang. Steve turns it all down. Now Steve's former employer has to get through the holidays without their most reliable worker, which will take at least two or three new hires to cover. Meanwhile, Steve can enjoy the holidays without stress, help prepare for the arrival of the baby and start looking for a job again when they're good and ready to go. Edit, obligatory, wow, this post blew up reaction. <laughs> That is so beautiful. Oh my god, that's like the dream everyone has after having a bad work experience. Just be like, nope, okay, I got written up. Here's my letter, by the way. Bye! One advice I always try to give people, which sometimes in the current housing market and stuff is easier said than done, but having like a frick off capital is so valuable. Having like some money saved up so you know that like you're fine on rent and stuff for a couple of months, even if you quit today, is so valuable. And it also makes you more confident because you have that in the back of your head that, hmm, I can actually walk, I don't have to take an infinite amount of poo if I don't want to. I caught my partner cheating, so I covered his whole house in glitter. That is literally it. I caught him cheating by looking through his trash, literally, lol, emails and found some pretty graphic emails from the other woman. Confirmed that he was with her today through his Google Maps tracking. So I got every bit of loose glitter I owned and went to his house and scattered it. In his bed, his couch, his chairs, his toilet, clothes, his iron flap top, Steve. I know I'll be okay and I'm going to heal, but guess who probably won't won't ever be able to fully get rid of all the glitter. <laughs> I swear to God, I had a party like 10 years ago, a New Year's Eve party with a decent amount of glitter, and I kept finding glitter pieces for a good four or five years after the party, even in my freaking oven somehow. And that wasn't maliciously spread or something. It was just like sprinkled on tables and stuff to make it look fancy. Imagine for how long you'll be digging up glitter from every crevice in your house when it's actually maliciously placed. <laughs> that is beautiful. My God. God. I got revenge on my bully. In school, I was relentlessly bullied. Two girls in particular had it out for me. I was shy, loved to read, didn't do the popular stuff, so I was the perfect victim. They would literally torture me by holding me down the staircase when we were alone and sticking pinboard pins into my arms, legs, and feet. When I tried to tell teachers, they said I fell onto them as they were lying on the floor or I did it to myself. It didn't help that one of them was the daughter of one of the teachers at the school. That is like such a freaking stereotypical bully thing where they like they feel so confident in it because they they know they have some bullshit parent that will always, like, bail them out. I hate that. Well, I finally got my revenge. I went to try out a new ice cream shop, and lo and behold, one of the girls was serving the ice cream. I have multiple allergies, including milk and gluten, of which the ice cream shop claims to be cautious. So I ordered gluten and dairy-free ice cream and set my phone camera up to film the area where the ice cream was being prepared because I saw that the girl had recognized me and was certain she would try something. And she did. I caught her on camera putting a spoonful of milk in the bottom of the bowl and crumbling the gluten-consisting wafers over everything, then camouflaged it with the last scoop of ice cream. She put it down in front of me and said, I hope you enjoy it! I sweetly smiled at her and asked if she could get the owner of the shop, because I wanted to thank her for being so welcoming to guests with allergies. You can guess what happened next. I showed the owner the video and told her that I would like to press charges, because in my country it is considered a criminal offense called inflicting bodily harm to serve someone an allergen when you know the person is allergic. The bully will never work anywhere while she will come in contact with food again, and she will have this on her criminal record for years. They do say revenge is a dish best served cold. Oh, oh that's beautiful. Some good old puns always make me proud. Bullies are sometimes really freaking stupid, which might be a good thing because they always push a little bit too far and then they get into territories like this, where it's literally illegal and you can just squish them real nice. That is some sweet karma. I hate bullies. They're the worst. Your friends won't stop parking in my driveway. Congrats, your parents know you vape at 16. My neighbors have a teenage son whose friends keep parking in my driveway. I went to check my mail last week and saw them all out in front and decided to nice bring up which was met with eye rolls and fake ah, okay Monday comes around and I come home to find three of his friends cars taking all the space I have to park it was a 14 hour day for me so I wasn't having it and made my second approach with the intention to make myself very clear instead of make it the neighbor's son's problem tonight I get home and it's happened again 
I went next door and an adult finally answered. I brought up the cars at my place and added a side note their kid never expected. He was also throwing his disposable vapes in my yard and I have the other neighbor as a witness. So I casually asked him to make sure that stops and the instant change in expression told me everything I needed to know after I walked away. Shortly after his friends left and I can assume they won't be back for a while. <laughs> Happy spring break, kid. Well, that is some sweet petty revenge. Frick around and find out, bish. Refuse to give the gift you promised my daughter? Fine, I'll take away the gift I got for you. This year I got a new job that has been paying me very well. Therefore, for this Christmas I decided to splurge on everyone. In particular, I spent a lot of money on my 9-year-old daughter and she deserves it 100%. She has been pushing herself in school, helping around in the house without being asked and always being the kindest soul you'll ever meet. However, when my mother-in-law came early in the morning and saw how the gifts under a tree were much more than usual, she asked why. I told her I bought everyone a bunch of gifts, including her. She then proceeded to ask how much gifts I got my daughter and told her about three big gifts and three mini ones. Apparently, this outraged her because she started saying that a nine-year-old did not deserve that many gifts and she would be taking away the gift she brought my daughter so my daughter wouldn't be too spoiled. Too spo- what? Christmas? Six gifts on Christmas. As a nine-year-old. What? That's- that's pretty normal! What are you talking about? I mean, sure, six gifts from, like, your parents alone might be a decent chunk, but it's not like the child is gonna be spoiled rotten. It's one day a year. I told her that was unfair, especially since my mother-in-law promised my daughter a doll for Christmas, and my daughter was looking forward to it. My mother-in-law said it let it be a lesson to my daughter that in life she can't get all the things she asks for. I mean, you can do- you can give her that lesson at any point, though. You know, when you're just walking through a store and she points at stuff, and you'd be like, ah, oh, you can't have everything, her darling. And- and that's it. You don't have to sour Christmas and be, like, all passive-aggressive about it. Look, I understand that, but it's not like I shower my daughter in gifts every day. And if anything, Christmas is the day you're supposed to spoil her children. But my wife told me to let it go, and it was her mother's gift, and therefore she could do anything she wanted with it, and her mother agreed, saying it was her right. And if we were going to play with that ideology, then so be it. I decided decided to remove the $600 designer bag I got my mother-in-law, the thing I knew she wanted the most, and gave her a $40 robe instead. Once my mother-in-law opened her present, she was disappointed, asking if that was all from me, because everyone else got increasingly more expensive gifts from me. And I said, yes, and apologized if I disappointed her, but we can't always get the gifts we hoped for. <laughs> this left both her and my wife extremely furious, but hey, the mother-in-law got enough gifts I wouldn't want to spoil her. <laughs> This is so petty. I love it. X lies during divorce to have me jailed, and instead he is left with remorse. I came across the sub today and thought I have the perfect story to add. I was getting divorced in the early 90s. My ex was pissed that I was divorcing him. I owned the house prior to the marriage, so he moved out. But he broke back in and tore up all kinds of things, tore up my jewelry, my clothes, he cut holes in all of them, etc. I couldn't prove it, but of course it was him. When we went to divorce court, he gave the judge a two-page list of things that he supposedly brought to the house with him prior to marriage that I refused to return. My attorney showed me the list and it was stuff that he never owned in the first place. He totally wanted me thrown in jail for contempt of court. My alternative ways to pay like $2,000 and I wasn't about to do that. I opted for jail, but my friends kept telling me to just pay it. I refused. Two days before I was appearing in court, a girlfriend of mine asked if she could see the list. Sure. She noted that things he said were there didn't give much, if any, of a description. For example, he says there's a gun. He didn't say what kind of gun. He said there was a computer and he didn't say what kind of computer, and so on. Her point was, if I went around and bought everything on the list, it would probably cost me about 200 bucks, and that was worth staying out of jail. I agreed, knowing it would also be worth him being livid that his plans didn't work. So I made a game of it. I went around to pawn shops and resale stores and told whoever was in charge there I was on a scavenger hunt, and I briefly explained what was going on. They all loved the idea and helped me get through my list rather quickly. Here are some of the lovely examples of what was boxed up for him. Gun, an old rusty cap gun screwdriver set, same old and rusty clothing, goodwill horrid stuff, busts last statue, made one myself from clay knives, old and rusty camping gear, an old pan, matches and a tiny tarp, and one of my favorites that I remember was, he said he had a Monopoly game, so I sent him a goodwill find without any of the pieces, just the board. I wish I could remember everything we got, it was so much fun, and when we got home, we had to videotape boxing them all up and going to the items one by one. My attorney told the judge that I had found in the attic and just hadn't seen it before, so sorry. 
The judge told my attorney to simply drop the box off at his attorney's office and the divorce was final. My only regret is not being able to see his face when he opened up the box of garbage and there was nothing he could say because he made the stuff up in the first place. It's been 30 years and I still get joy thinking about it. That is so sweet. It's kind of like that story, be careful what you wish for. Oh, you demand all this stuff? Well, let me fill it up with garbage for you. I love this and I love your friend that they came up with the idea. That's a good friend. That's a keeper. They're also smart. I found out my husband and dearest friend were having an affair. My ex-husband and I met when our best friends married each other. He was the best man and I was the maid of honor. After a couple of years, we all lived in the same community and had our four children in the same time frame. We hired my friend, let's call her Hobag. <laughs> to be our attorney for our business when we thought about selling franchises. Oh, <laughs> bag and my ex, let's call him Dog. <laughs> Spent lots of late nights working out the kinks and contracts and more. One July, they had to go to New York for a week to interview prospective franchises. Her ex-husband called me to say he'd hired a detective who followed them and saw them all lovey-dovey and that they only had one hotel room. Well, since it was July and sizzling, her front right minivan window was open about two inches. I took it upon myself to puree a few raw shrimp with chicken broth and strain the solids out. Oh my god! I then fed a long tube down to her rear passenger carpet and under the seat as best as I could. I didn't choose the front seat because it had removable mats. I then slowly funneled about one half cup of my potion down the tube. That week it was over 90 degrees every day. It was ghastly. A triumph! Her husband and I I didn't let on that we knew about the affair until we'd all had consultations with every good lawyer in our city and had our financial ducks in a row. Pretty effective revenge I don't regret. And I think someone in the comments also mentioned that since they had consultations with every good lawyer in the city, it also means that the other ex-husband and ex-wife can't have consultations with the same lawyers, even if it's only a consultation because it means that it's conflicting interests. So that is like extra devious. My significant other was running a double life. Oh, this is the perfect place for this little story. My significant other had a double life. He had a girlfriend that thought she was in a full-blown relationship when he practically lived with me. She thought I was getting in the way of their love story, so she contacted me to give me the what's up. For context, I knew nothing about her. Unfortunately, she was the side chick who believed that coming to his place for one-two hours once a week to give him naughty favors was a legit relationship. When she contacted me to try to tell me to stay away from her mans, I called him and he freaked out. I told him it's either her or me. He cried and pleaded and told me he can't live without me. I made him dump her on the phone in front of me. Then I turned around and dumped him. That was 100% always my plan, lol. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's so I love that. I love, oh my god, that's beautiful. Well, laddies, lasses, and lasses, I do hope you enjoy these fascinating petty stories as much as I do. If you have a bully or someone in your life, make sure it gives you some inspiration. Like, for example, stealing every other sock out of someone's sock drawer. Ooh, the devious vengeance. And I hope to see you in the very near future. Take care, you beautiful beans. Mwah.